I wanted to share some notes and some observations I've made uh, over the past um, almost two years uh, in with regards to my little garden, which you can see right here. Uh, some things that worked, some things that didn't work, and I just wanted to share some notes. It started off just like my neighbor's plot over there. Uh, I arrived at the end of the winter and it was bare soil, pretty much like that. And um, uh, the first thing I did was put down a layer of compost, uh, a thin layer of compost, because there was not that much available at that time. And then after that, I put a thick layer of wood chips, of which you can see the remnants all throughout the garden. And there's a whole lot to say about that, and I did in another video, so you can check that out. Um, but that's the basics. And then ever since, I've been adding plants um, into the mulch, either by uh, scraping the soil aside and sowing them, or um, planting them, uh, a young plant, young seedlings, uh, directly into the soil. Then one of the major projects that I actually undertook was doing nothing, <laughs> in the sense that I let a lot of plants uh, set seed and self-sow. So for example, um, all these uh, red silver beets uh, are all baby seedlings from one single uh, red silver beet plant that grew and uh, uh, flowered the first season I was here. And uh, this is the beautiful result, uh, the silver beet in abundance everywhere. Another beautiful example of that would be uh, this magnificent beauty, um, uh, the miner's lettuce. And if I zoom out just a wee bit, you can see over here, pretty much all of this uh, small green stuff is miner's lettuce. It's a beautiful fresh green that can handle a bit of frost, so it's ideal for my garden. And uh, I introduced a few plants last autumn and all around here and throughout the pathways the ants I think I believe have spread the seed in such an extent that uh, it's going to be covered in a carpet of miner's lettuce. Anywhere I walk is a risk of trampling young seedlings of which the majority are edible not all of them a few of them are support plants or other plants of interest and the odd one might be a plant that is unwanted but definitely the majority is all seedlings that are showing up that are useful or beneficial to the garden in one way or another i also took a step back and allowed some of the plants that I wasn't familiar with yet to grow and to establish themselves into the garden. And this is a, a beautiful example of that. Uh, this is, turns out to be feverfew and it's a medicinal herb that just grew and showed up voluntarily and is very welcome here. Interestingly enough, there's one plant that I'm not very keen on finding and that's this one right here. That's a, an oxalis plant, uh, one of the non-edible species that I'm aware of. And for some reason, the first season, after I put down a, a deep layer of mulch, it was completely gone from the garden. And now I've found that it's slowly returning and spreading again. And um, yeah, I'll have to give another thought to that. And that is the use of perennial plants along the garden border where it um, borders the grass and previously the grass uh, was creeping in and beneath and through the seeds that were falling over and spreading in the gardens and so what I've done is I've gone and trialed and I'm actually still trialing uh, which plants uh, provide a good barrier against that and this is a gorgeous example of one of the plants that is proving to be a definite winner in that category it's a red leafed broadleaf plantain so the leaves are a lot milder than the regular wild variety uh, delicious in, uh, in a salad uh, you can also eat the seed uh, you can use the uh, leaves medicinally and there's quite a lot of benefits to the plant and also it proves quite uh, to do quite well in stopping the grass not completely yet as you can see there's a few uh, grasses here and there that are popping their heads through but I reckon if it has a bit of time to get further established this plant is not even these plants are not even a year old um, yes they'll be doing quite well on another beautiful example would be this uh, lemon sorrel uh, this big green a beautiful being right there uh, it struggled a bit in the heat and the dryness of the summer but now it's coming back lusciously and beautifully and giving an abundance of leafy greens 
Right, so to give a quick summary of the message that I'm actually trying to get across, uh, and that is uh, start with, if you have the possibility, start with a layer of mulch. It can be wood chips, it can be cardboard, it can be anything. Um, and as that decomposes, you uh, add the seeds that you want from the plants that you want, and you also plant some plants directly. You let a lot of stuff go to seed. Uh, you become quite curious to some of the plants that show up themselves. You work with perennials in the border, and then within a year and a half, two years' time, there's, uh, you can have a quite a nice established little garden that has an abundance of green leafy uh, veggies uh, all throughout the winter for you to enjoy. Hope that is useful and inspiring and so far so good. Thank you for watching and see you next time.